Hi, welcome to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. Glad you could join us tonight. I'm Kenny Fogel, your host, and uh, it's been a rough day here in the in the local area, and it's one that we've talked about for a few a little while now with the, with our guests here today, and it's been a, it's run the gamut. We've run from anger, frustration to just dismay to sadness, and it's one of the things that we've uh, want to talk about here today with the uh, with uh, the chairman of the board here with the St. Catherine College, Mr. John Turner, and the president of St. Catherine College, Cindy Nattinger. So. Um, I'll start with you, Cindy, before we get, it's a, it's a decision, it's, it's had to be an excruciating decision that come down the line to say St. Catherine College will be closing the end of July. It was, we had a board meeting last night. It was uh, the, the, the last of a series of board meetings that we've had uh, to, to look at our situation and try to make a decision what to do here. Um, I, I, w I am obviously on the board as president, but uh, did not have a vote in that decision, um, it was a very painful meeting, I can tell you that. It was a very difficult decision for our board to make. Well, John, is there any other way to say it than the Department of Education basically precipitated the fall of St. Catherine College? When for what all this went off the Department of Education, and we'll get into the history of that in just a little bit, but if it wasn't for that, St. Catherine College would still be striving today. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's no doubt that the action they took uh, seven, 18 months ago now, by their own admission, was incorrect. They, even after that admission, they have not modified their behavior in terms of the restrictions that they've handcuffed the college with, the irregularity in the financial student aid reimbursement process created such uncertainty that it made it impossible for us finally to have confidence that we could go ahead, bring in a fall semester of students, but not have the confidence that we would do the right thing by those students, which is to give them an education with the idea that we could get them through a full financial year. And it's, to me, incredible that uh, a bureaucratic department that's supposedly devoted to protecting students. Put you out of business. To, decides not to protect them. Even though they admit that they were wrong, they were unwilling to correct that wrong. Well, at some point, they probably will. But at that point, it's probably a moot point because it's down the road so far that you just simply can't survive. And they were well aware of the issue of time when this mediation effort was underway back in uh, March up until the 15th of April. Mm -hmm. Uh, the judge made them very aware that the college just didn't have unlimited lifelines. We don't have any access to commercial credit lines, and we rely upon the reimbursement process. But the, not only was it irregular, they could change the protocol at any point in time. Well, Cindy, I know this obviously is one of the things I've heard. <laughs> You hear criticism one way or the other, and you're always going to hear criticism. I said, well, you built all these new buildings. You did all this new stuff, but you couldn't pay for it. But you could if the enrollment stayed at the level that you anticipated to stay at. How much effect has this Department of Education ruling had on enrollment itself? Is, is, is that basically what has basically brought things down? I think that's, that's a key part of where we are today with, um, with the decision to close the college. Uh, when, before this started, we were close to 600 full-time students and growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we started uh, several new programs, and the, and the purpose of starting those new programs were to grow our enrollment. And these were exciting new programs for St. Catherine. The Radiation Therapy Program, Bachelor of Science, the only one in the state of Kentucky, won our hospitals and our, our health uh, care um, organizations need. We have uh, programs like the, the Berry Farming Program, a unique program, the only one in the, in the, in the world like that, uh, based off Wendell Berry's uh, philosophies and teachings of sustainable farming practices. So we had uh, niche programs, uh, unique programs, and, and, and the purpose of those was to grow our enrollment. But even before this all started with the Department of Education and the, and the challenges that we faced, uh, our enrollment was close to 600, and that, that, that was the, the number that we needed to uh, sustain the, the, the debt that the college had uh, acquired through the building of these beautiful buildings that, that we have here. So uh, now, uh, two years later, we're looking at this fall, if we were uh, to continue on, 
um, something in the neighborhood of 470, 465, 470 students. And that loss is in a direct correlation with the Department of Education withholding federal funds. 100% we attribute that because we had two recruiting cycles where we had to look potential students in the eye and say, oh, we're so happy you want to study that program with us, but we don't have financial aid to offer you because the Department of Ed refuses to uh, uh, allow aid on those programs. And, and again, as, as John's already mentioned, they've already admitted that they were wrong in doing that but they won't remediate that wrong with the college but the thing is, is let's go back just a few years just when all this expansion went mm -hmm. on and the changes now you did get these everything was accredited through I think the southern so, the southern association of colleges basically and schools. that was the process of getting mm -hmm. things moving mm -hmm. along Department mm -hmm. of Education apparently had a problem with that well, I, I don't, I'm not sure. We, we, we've been, we spent uh, 15 months, 18 months trying to figure out what their problem was because we uh, uh, followed the protocol that was in place. We followed the protocol that was in regulation. We pointed that out to them. Uh, but for some reason, they were uh, adamant that these programs were not approved by them. Uh, and again, it wasn't until we filed the lawsuit to say there was no process that we missed that they admitted that we were right. There was no process. Well, we John, missed. I know we've talked before about this is not the first time they've done this. We, I think we've mentioned Dexter College, and, then, right. and basically this was what closed them. The same, same process is, it's almost like it's a punitive process in a way. They, they're withholding funds even though they know you need the money, and they know you can't survive without the money, but they're withholding funds that the judge says belongs to you. Well, the, the judge hasn't said that yet, but Importantly, DOE has admitted that mm -hmm. the funds belong to us and that, that federal student aid, those students were eligible to receive. As Cindy said, the process, though, that they should have modified this most restrictive process they have for reimbursement, they have failed or just will not modify. And as recently as last week, the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education, their president, Bob King, called the Undersecretary of Education, Ted Mitchell, in Washington and spoke with him and advocated for us and said, clearly, there must be some way that some modification can be made. And there was an indication uh, last Thursday that, that this could happen. And President King recommended that we uh, contact the Kansas City office, which is headed by a gentleman named Ralph Labosco, which we did. Uh, he elected not to return our call, contacted his attorneys, who then contacted our legal counsel, and in effect said, in so many words, there's nothing to discuss, we're not moving on anything. And this is after the Undersecretary of Education encouraged us to do this. And so when you think about it, Who's above the Undersecretary of Education? Well, it's John King, who's the Secretary, and then beyond that is, is President Obama. Yeah. So we feel we took it to the absolute highest levels where we felt that we could be heard. Well, that's the key to it, as I could say. People would say, well, this, is not, this just, just didn't happen yesterday. This has been going on for a while, and when we talk about advocates, I know you've reached out to the senators and reached out to congressmen and people all over the country, but no, no real reaction. I mean, there's nobody that's really come out and stood up and said, this has got to happen. So I don't know how, uh, how well, I, you've done everything to get their attention. We have, and I, and I want to say, you know, Congressman Guthrie, who is our representative in this area, has been very gracious with his time and his efforts on behalf of the college. He's, he's worked very hard, and I'm, we're grateful to, hi, to him and his staff. He's been here to the college to talk about it. He's met with me in, in D.C. I've been to his office, and he's, he's reached out. He tried. He's made phone calls for us. Um, I, I think the, the, the real sad part of this is the bureaucracy is so large mm -hmm. and there is no accountability for government officials that can get away with it. Uh, I guess I'm at a loss for words and I'm very rarely at a loss for words for something like that is when they admit that they owe you the money, mm -hmm. that's what would save that's the right. college and, right. we still, and even though they admit they owe the money, mm -hmm. they theoretically could hold the money for another five to ten years before it'll get here right. but there won't be a college here for it to that's come right. to and they're well aware of that and they're and well they aware that. of that yeah. and, that's and, and, and it's important I'm glad that we're having this conversation because I know when we filed the lawsuit there were questions about you know uh, 
some of the discourse going on around it. Why is this private school getting federal dollars anyway? They're a private school, they shouldn't get federal dollars. And just to make it clear, these dollars we keep talking about that are being withheld from the college are our are, are students' dollars. It's the students' right to have federal financial aid. And every student has a right to, to file for those uh, federal, file the FAFSA form and get financial aid dollars. So that's what we're talking and about. And go to the it college was, of their choosing. That's, and go to the right. college of their choosing. So it's the students' money that's been withheld, but it gets funneled through the college. Mm -hmm. So so we, we, we're talking about it as they're withholding our money, but it's money that is, is really applied through students. Mm -hmm. And so the students now are left with a hefty bill trying to figure out how to pay that. And for this entire time, we've used our own resources to, to fund those students to allow they took loans from us and and that depleted our resources while we were working this out so now that they've said that they were wrong we're, we appreciate that they said they were wrong we now need them to reimburse us for the monies that we had to, to it, they haven't done it right. well the key is, is this has been going on for a while you've been done everything you think you know to do to, to fix it and at this point when the press release comes out and says closing july 31st mm -hmm. is pretty clear press release. I mean, mm -hmm. it pretty much said this is it. Is this it? Oh, this is it. This is it. I mean, we, we looked at our budgets. We've looked at everything. We needed a, a, a remedy from the, the Department of Education on how they've wronged us. They just said, we'll, we'll meet you in court. We know court cases can drag out for several years. We know we don't have that kind of time. Uh, had, had we had we had some sort of compensation, we know so, you know we need several million dollars to to move forward into next year. That's what we're short because of what has happened with us, mm. and we need that in order to meet our obligations to our community, our our, our, our creditors, our students. We need to be able to um, you know run a college, and that's that's what we're short to do. Well, that. The word you used just a second ago. We're talking about students. We're talking about faculty, but community, that's and right. this has been a community college basically for three counties at least, mm -hmm. maybe more. So this is a big loss. I mean, it this is. is a loss that probably people don't understand the impact mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. this is about mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, I agree with you, Kenny. It's, it's, a, it's a huge loss. And I think uh, at the onset, people are so surprised. But as, as this unfolds, the, the economic impact alone will be significant to the mm -hmm. Tri-County area. It's, it's, a, it's a big loss. So just looking at a crystal ball, what do you see as the future of where we're sitting here right now? I mean, is there any anybody showing any interest to in coming in doing anything? Rumors. I mean, I've heard people say a million things. Well, somebody else will come in, but you've tried that. We've tried that. We've tried that. We've talked. We, you know, we. I want what I want the community to know as well is we've been fighting this fight for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. We've reached out every way that we know to do. I mean, we're, we we filed a lawsuit against the Department of Education. Uh, um, that's as bold as it gets David to say we Goliath, need someone yeah. to listen to us and reached out to all of our political leaders. We had a letter writing campaign on our campus uh, about, about a month and a half ago to, to bombard our senators and, and we just couldn't get any movement. We've gone to, as John said, the number two in command uh, at, at the Department of Education. Uh, we, we've reached out in, in every way that we know um, and, and, and we just could not get assistance in this manner. And the worst part is they admitted what they did was wrong. So in, in terms of, you know, where do I see this going in the future, we, we've had a lot of conversations about that, too. It's hard to say right now. Um, we, we just don't know. John, I know you do this with the love of doing it. You're the position you, you're in as chairman. A sleepless light, night last night, or how, how is this affecting you? I mean, well, it's been a long process. Yeah, it's been a long process, and I've enjoyed a wonderful 20 plus year relationship with the college and the Dominicans. So I feel terrible for the community and to think that for 194 years, education has been conducted on this property, 194 years. And due to a bureaucracy's lack of interest in students, that's gonna stop. And as you know, we serve a rural area. It's generally underserved with post-secondary education. And as Dr. Nattinger mentioned, we have two distinct programs where you just can't go, in the case of Berry Farming Program, there's no other place in the world. And it was right here in Washington County in, in Central Kentucky. So it, it's very disheartening that they chose this path, almost in my uh, view, a deliberate path to take the college and, and put it out of business. Well, I had two sons go here, and I know there's a lot of alumni probably reaching out today or mm -hmm. maybe in shock. Mm 
-hmm. And uh, so mm -hmm. alumni, students, the Dominicans, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of people affected. That's right. That's right. It's a sad day here. It is. It's very sad. And again, hope beyond hope. I mean, I know I ask you what the, what the future is and what, what's next, and we, and we and honestly don't know that. But again, maybe hopefully some political leader, hopefully some alumni that's got connections mm -hmm. with maybe one step above the undersecretary or mm -hmm. President Obama himself, mm -hmm. maybe. They, they may take, mm -hmm. a, may take a major mm -hmm. intervention, but I'm hoping good things. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, the good things don't look like they're coming. No. That's right. That's yeah. right. Well, Dr. Nettinger, we appreciate you being here today. John, we appreciate hey, John Turner, you. the thank chairman of the board here for St. Catherine College. And again, we reach out to you to let you know that it is a sad day here at the, the St. Catherine College campus. And uh, hopefully beyond hope, there is some miracle out there we don't know about. But as of right now, July 31st is the last closing day of St. Catherine College. Been in business for a long, long time, serving the needs of Central Kentucky and uh, we have no idea what kind of impact this is going to have when this just does leave. So um, we just pray for the best. We stick around a lot more. Come here on Community Focus. We'll stick around. We'll tell you what we know when we know it. I'm Kenny Fogel. We'll see you next time here on Channel 6 TV.